Okay guys, Logic Pro X 10.1. Um, this is a very cool update. Um, I've been checking it out for a few hours. Let's look at some of the new stuff. Okay, software instrument track. Empty region on the track. Open that region in piano edit. Boom, there's the uh, piano edit. It looks the same, but we've got some really cool new things now. Okay, first of all, you know the old sketch. When you're working in piano edit, you want to have a decent depth of vertical zoom. If the zoom is reduced like that, you can see more octaves, but now the rows are so narrow you can't really work. So you want the zoom to be something like that. But then you'll often run into this problem. You'll have notes in your pattern, in your region, in different octaves. Yeah? And it's a complete nightmare because you've got to scroll between the octaves all the time to see the notes. You can't see the relationship between them or anything. And the only way to solve that is to reduce the vertical zoom like that. Okay, now I can see all the octaves, but really my rows are too thin to work well. Okay, well, because you want the zoom to be something like that. Well, now we've got this new collapse button here, look. Boom, collapse. And it collapses the piano roll down so that only the rows, only the note rows that have got actual notes on are visible and each row has its MIDI note visible. So you can see which is which note in which octave. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, if you need to add in additional notes for which there are not rows in this collapse mode, just uncollapse, add in the additional notes you want in whichever octaves, like that, recollapse, and you're just working on the notes that are in the pattern. The other rows are taken out, okay? Really, really cool. All right. Command A, hard up the lot, backspace, they're all gone, uncollapse. Okay, but it gets better. Now, finally, hallelujah, we've got the brush tool like Cubase has. Well, this brush tool is fantastic, it really is. Okay. The brush tool brushes in rows of notes at whatever the quantized value is here. It doesn't matter what the grid is. And it also acts as a kind of smart pencil brushing in individual notes always at the quantized value as well okay so um we're in sixteenths for the quantized it doesn't matter what the grid is and when i use the brush tool as a pencil it brushes in sixteenth length notes the other cool thing is when you mouse over a note it automatically becomes the eraser no need to key press to get the eraser brush in rub out and you get the pencil any time with command, right? The other thing that's cool, brushing an individual note, changes length, but this is now not the new default note length like with the pencil. The default note length is still whatever the quantize is, sixteenths in this case. Yeah? Fantastic. And of course you can brush in rows of notes at the quantize value. So we're in sixteenths and we brush in a row of sixteenths. Boom, done. If you want to, Select them all, make them the length you want. Fantastic. Let's do 30 seconds. Brush in a row of 30 seconds. Done. If you want to, highlight the lot, change the lengths to whatever you like. Yeah. Backspace to delete. Any quantized value, it doesn't matter what the grid is, you haven't got to change the grid. Um, 16 swing C. If you want to, highlight, highlight the lot, change them to whatever length you want. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Okay, Fantastic tool, and it really comes in into its own, um, especially when you're doing drum patterns, as we'll see in a minute. Okay, let's just backspace and delete all those. Okay, very, very cool. Um, but the other thing is, the brush tool, let's put it back to 16, it works in conjunction with the scale quantize here. So if we put the scale quantize, let's say, to C uh, harmonic minor, and this is especially good for noobs who are wanting to make up patterns, you know, melodies or whatever. Now, with the brush tool, which I've got now, if I hold down with the left mouse and just keep dragging to the right, it will put in the notes, it will brush in the notes at whatever the quantize value is, 16. If you brush in and keep the mouse over the note you can then move it up or down okay 
Now I've got the scale of C harmonic minor. So holding down the left mouse all the time, and let's start on the C3, I brush in the first note, right? That's it. Now while holding down the left mouse, if I drag to the right, it'll brush in the next 16th note. And while still holding out down with the left mouse, if I I can now push that note up or down in the harmonic minor scale of C, which I've set in the scale quantize. So I'll push it up one interval, and that's an, that's the next interval up in C harmonic minor. Still holding down with the left mouse, drag to the right, it brushes in the next 16. Holding down over that note, push it up the next uh, interval, and so on. Brush, push it up. 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 And there is a C harmonic minor scale. Yeah, do you get it? It'll do all that for you. Select the lock, backspace. At any quantize. Let's do that with a swing. And you know it can be you can you can push up or down in any direction by any um, interval. So we could do it like this again, still with sixteen swing C. I could go down two intervals. Next note. Go up at whatever intervals. You can do all that. Okay. okay, let's close piano edit, get rid of this region, and let's change the instrument. Let's change it to a drum machine. Gritty Funk. There is now a drum machine on the track. Pencil in an empty one bar region, open it in piano edit, and hey presto, piano edit now auto detects there's a drum machine on the track. And next to the piano notes, it gives you the standard general MIDI drum names for the relevant notes. Now these are not the names of the drums in the actual kit, these are just standard GM drum names for the standard GM drum notes, but it, it, this, it does this by default and at least it gives you an idea of what type of instrument is going to be on that note, what type of drum is on that note. But better, more importantly, we have the pattern notes for Ultra Beat Sequencer listed next to their keys, and it does this automatically. So this is incredibly useful if you're working with Ultra Beat Sequencer in pattern mode, being triggered by MIDI notes. Um, let's switch Ultra Beat Sequencer on. Come on, Ultra Beat, come here, son. Put the sequencer on, put it in pattern mode. Okay, recompact the stack, select the region. Right, so now, and I'm going to do this with the brush tool. So now I don't need to ha refer to a piece of paper which note is which pattern. They're written here. I know this is pattern one for Ultra Beat Sequencer. I know that's pattern four. That's pattern seven. That's pattern nine, etc. Absolutely brilliant. Now, if we now switch on drum names, boom. Now it gets better again because now the drum names there are the actual names of the drums. Oh, there. They're the actual names of the drums in the kit that's on the track. Now, if Ultra Beat Sequencer is still switched on and pattern mode is on, you still get the pattern notes underneath as well. Okay, if we turn off, come on Ultra Beat, turn off its pattern mode and turn its sequencer off, all right, then, those pattern numbers disappear. Okay, but we still have the actual drum names of the drums in the kit that is on the track. These are the actual drum names. Now, now when you combine this with the brush tool, you get this fantastic drum editor. We're in 16th quantize for the brush, and I can just build my pattern. like that. I know every note I pencil or rather brush in is going to be a sixteenth. Yeah, no problems at all. Um, and then if I want to brush in a row of 
closed hats at sixteenths. Yep, just choose sixteenths for my quantize for my brush. Boom, sixteenth hats. Yeah, let's select the lot, backspace, or let's put in swing hats. Boom. Done. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. The other cool thing is let's put this quantize into 30 seconds. I don't have to faff around changing the grid. I can put in a couple of 30 seconds like here. And they're exactly on 30 seconds and a 30 second in length. No need to change the grid with the brush tool. Great. Let's say I want to put in a little, I've got swing on the hats, right? Let's say I want to put a little swing snare at the very end of the pattern here to go with the um, hats. Well, I put this back into 16 swing C. There's my snare row. I just brush in a couple of notes at the end on the last two sixteenths. Knock out the first one. Boom. There's my last little sixteenth skip snare at the end of the pattern, which goes for those hats. Let's just re-quantize the hats. Boom. There we go. OK. Let's put some um, swing claps in. Etc. Absolutely brilliant. And these are the actual names of the drums in the kit. Watch the names change as I change the kit. Ready? I'm going to change now. Techno 808. Boom. And the names change to the names of the actual drums in the Techno 808 kit. Let's change it to Booty 909. Boom. The names change. Fantastic. That's what you get with drum names on. The actual names of the drum, the drums in the kit. Okay, so all good. And in combination with the brush tool, this is fantastic. Oh yeah, and of course, if you want to, uh, get the brush tool back. Let's go back to the um, Gritty Funk Kit, and the names will change. Okay, again, you've often got this thing where most of your drum kit is down at the bottom here where you're building the pattern, and you might have up at the top some percussion instruments. And again, if the um, piano roll isn't a very tall height like that, and you've got a decent vertical zoom, your percussion notes are up at the top out of the way. Well, you can use the collapse, and then you can have a nice low height piano roll, and the drums that you're using in your pattern are all there in their rows with their names there. Lovely, jubbly. You can see all the notes that are in the pattern, all the drums that you're using in the pattern. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Okay, so there you go. That's um, some, some more stuff with the piano roll. And there's one last thing to check out with the piano roll. Okay, uh, one other thing with the piano roll. Uh, in functions, we now have this thing called time handles. Okay, now um, let's pencil in a one bar region on the track. I've now changed it back to a, a, a synth. Okay, here we have one bar in the piano edit. I'm using the brush tool at the value of sixteenths. I'm going to brush in one, two, three, four sixteenths. There's four notes. Each one is exactly a sixteenth in length on quarter beats in one bar. Now in the old days with Logic, right, you could select all those notes and still you can do this now. Four sixteenth length notes, each one on a quarter beat in one bar. And with them all selected, I could go to, and I can still do it, and go to Functions, MIDI Transform, and I can use the double speed and the half speed. Now, if I do double speed on those four notes, boom, just operate only because they're already selected, boom. Now, the four sixteenth length notes that were on four beats of a bar have now been double speeded, so they are four. 30 second length notes on every eighth on half a bar. Command said undo. 
yeah or with them all selected let's drag the region out so we because we need a double length region for this come on now the region is two bars in length i've got four sixteenths each one uh, 16th length notes each one on a quarter beat across one bar with them all selected midi transform and now i'll half speed them boom trans just operate only on the selected notes boom and now the four sixteenth notes each on a quarter beat across one bar are now four eighth length notes across two bars on every other beat that's half speed and double speed right let's just undo that well now we can do that with a drag feature okay functions activate time handles like that so it's ticked and now with the um uh, pointer tool there's my four sixteenth length notes on one bar each on a quarter beat using the time handles uh, and the pointer tool drag across like that now i want my time handle my two time handles to be on the first beat of the bar and the last beat of the bar covering the full bar and i can do the same thing but with dragging i can drag out and half speed them and now I've got the same as doing half speed, but I did it by dragging. I've got four eighth length notes across two bars, each one every other beat. Put them back to what they were, four sixteenths across one bar each on a beat. Now let's double speed them, just drag in like that. And now they're four thirty seconds length notes across half a bar. See what I mean? So you've got that. And this is very cool if you want to um, drag the timing of a phrase to shorten it or lengthen it to make it fit something where you perhaps played a phrase and you want it to that phrase to cover a longer length of time at a different speed yeah very very cool okay so we got that all right boom click on the background to get rid of it okay function turn time handles off and the arrow tool just goes back to being a regular select like that and whatever else okay so there you go that's your time handles okay um that's stuff in the piano edit